How you doing, folks? Welcome back to the Dash of Milan. I got another video for you today. Today, we're going to talk about water-based joint compound, otherwise known as spackling here in the States. I use it all the time for my terrain making, whether it's buildings or hills or rocky outcrops. I also use it for my basing of my figures. It's really versatile. There's all kinds of ways to use it, and it's easy to get. You can get it at hardware stores, craft shops sometimes. They come in convenient-sized tubs, and it'll go a long way. And because it's water-based, it's going to last even longer. Let's jump into the video. I'm going to show you guys what it is and how you can use it for your crafting and basing. I dug out a nice decent sized tub of spackle all-purpose joint compound as you can see. This is perfect size for me. There's quite a bit in there to last quite a while. And if it's sealed like this one is properly, uh, it should retain its consistency for quite a while. In this case, I lucked out. It's pretty much the consistency we want to use for crafting our terrain. First thing you want to do is make sure you stir it up and get it workable uh, like I'm doing here. Now, that's just right. To thicken up, you add a little bit of grit or sand, and I'll show you that later. One of the great things about using spackle is that you can change its color. And what I do is I use water-based paints and I kind of mix it in with the spackle. In this case, I'm going to use a little bit of brown and I'm going to turn this spackle into an earthy shade. Of course, you could use different colors of paints. You could use greens. You could use various shades of brown. Uh, you could also use a black or a gray uh, if you wanted to get a ruined feel. Uh, this is great for bases. This is great for uh, doing the sides of buildings as well as rock outcroppings and other pieces of terrain you could be working with. So color it right up any color you want. Of course, gray is one of my favorites, and that's mainly because I do a lot of work with terrain, and it really does work and it looks the part. And being able to add paint to your spackle adds to its versatility. One of the techniques I like to do after I get it colored up the proper color, like brown in this case, uh, I like to add a little texture to it by using grit or sand. That's pretty simple and easy enough to do. Uh, in this case, I'm using a little grit and I'm sprinkling it in and mix that in with your spackle and you're going to get a nice texture. This is useful if you're making uh, ground effects or putting texture on walls of buildings. Uh, you could add uh, various flocking materials uh, to get a muddy looking appearance. In this case, I've got just, just the grit mixed in with the brown spackle and it's still wet, but it does look like mud. If we take a look at the results of our spackling, here I have a piece of terrain, which is basically foam, and I used the spackle for the texturing along the sides. Now, the brush there is a little technique I use to create some consistency and to create lines up and down. I use the brush to actually apply the spackle. And as you can see, it looks more natural. It looks more like a rock uh, when I use the brush. And I really enjoy this piece, actually. And of course, it is foam, and it was cut with a very sharp knife, and then the spackling was applied. So you get a lot of texture going on there. Uh, and I also used a little bit of grit mixed in. Here's another crop formation. You can see the same thing. If you want a smoother surface, just don't bother putting in the grit. Um, here we have a lake, and we've got some craters that I also used to spackle with. Uh, in the case of the lake, as you'll see here in the second, the little swirls whipping around is basically just pure spackle. There's no grit or texture added. It's just I used a brush, a uh, small brush in this case, and I made little swirls in it, and you get this little water effect. And, of course, there's watered-down white glue to give it that shine on the top. And, of course, here I have my craters building up the edges, and I just splotched that on with an old brush and built it up. Uh, and made it look uh, three-dimensional. So that right there is spackle in action. An obvious use for your spackle is basing your figures, uh, adding that texture to the bases. In this case, I added all the grit and sand to it, and that paint coloration, that earth color. And then I put little rocks on top of that uh, to add even more texture. You do that while it's still wet, of course. Uh, then we add your normal flocking material, grasses and greens and other things. You want to leave some of the spackle, the earth-colored spackle, showing through. It looks more realistic, more pleasing to your figures. Uh, makes them stand out. And I do that with all my figures in my collection. I, I use spackle for that, whatever the scale might be. I love making my own buildings. In this case, I have some card structures I made, and the finishing touches was using spackle. You could see it on the walls. You could see it on the roof where I added texturing with an X-Acto knife, make it look like shingles and such. 
Uh, and I also added grit to the walls to make it look more natural. In the case of this adobe here, it looks has that natural mud effect. And I used a brush to apply all this on to get the right effect. You can also use it with no grit whatsoever, just a pure spackle, and go over the, the walls, and in the case here, the pillars and such, to get a stone-like effect to your building. Smooth, and you just paint over it, and there it goes. So there you are, folks. That's how I use spackle for my buildings and my terrain, and it really works for me. I love using spackle with this. Uh, just use your brush, add some glue, paint, boom, you're on your way. Now, if the spackle does actually dry up on you, as long as you're not mixing uh, glue in your uh, spackle, like in my case, I like to use little mini tubs. So if I do use white glue mixed in, you know, I could keep it separate. But uh, as long as you don't have any glue in it, uh, it's a relatively easy fix if it does dry up on you. Uh, like in the case here, all I did was I basically added some water, and I'll go on to actually break up uh, the spackle, the dried spackle, into little chunks and so on and so forth. And it's usually just a matter of working it until it gets back to its original consistency. Not a big issue, but again, make sure that you aren't using white glue in the mix if you want to get it back again. Keep that separate from the other spackle you have. Now, in this case here, we're, we're working it right back to its original consistency. It's a little bit thicker, but it looks the part. It's back in shape, and it's good to go. And again, folks, this is one of the strength uh, water-based joint compound. So there you go, folks. That's how I use water-based joint compound for my hobby. Like I said, it's very useful whether you're basing your figures or if you're making terrain and crafting hills or want to texture up some walls to some handmade buildings. It's very useful. It's relatively cheap and it's easy to obtain. One thing I should point out is if you do use glue, white glue, mixed in with your spackle, if you don't use it right away or finish off that part of your spackle project, it will dry up and it's pretty much useless. I mean, it's going to be hard as a rock. But using white glue mixed in with your spackle, it really does the trick and adds to the, the durability of the spackling. I usually do that with my basing. Another part of advice I should give you is that when you do use various grit and sands mixed in with your spackle, transfer the spackle that you're working with to a smaller tub. You can use like icing containers or something for cakes. Uh, I use them. Put some spackle in there and that's specifically for texturing. Put in your sand, maybe put your glue in there, whatever, and keep that separate from your main source of spackling. That way you don't ruin it all can still make use of it in different ways. Like I did with that Greek, Greek building, I didn't put any uh, texturing in that. There was no grit or anything. It was just pure spackle. Makes a nice smooth surface. Side of that, get yourself all kinds of water-based paints. Your glue, of course, have some water to mix it up. And if it does dry out, you can get the right consistency. And if it does, when you're first using it, does seem to be stiffened up, uh, more drier than you want it to work with, just add some water. Otherwise, just add some sand and you'll get a little bit of a thicker spackle to work with. That's what I do. It, it lasts me a long time and it goes a long way. And it's highly usable in this hobby of ours of wargaming. So there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. Give me some comments. What do you use for your basing and your craft projects? Do you use spackle or water-based joint compound? Got any special techniques you want to share? Let me know. I'm curious what you guys use. I hope you enjoyed the video, my friends. Comment, subscribe, share the video, and as always, hang in there, folks. It's only going to get better. Take care.